So many times the approach of learning a new shot looks like this. You stand in one corner, someone's feeding shuttles to you, and then you practice to play that shot um, as consistent as possible. You try to get repetition after repetition and yeah, try to get as much consistency in that movement. So here, for example, I'm practicing a cross court net shot and yeah, I'm doing that standing, someone's feeding shuttles to me. But now compare what I'm doing here to a real match situation where I have an opponent, where I have to move to the shuttle and where I have to make a decision where I want to play the shot. And I think already now you can see there's such a huge gap between those two levels. If you want to bridge that enormous gap, you have to put some extra steps in. And in this video, I want to show you six levels so you really get from the basic technical training to a match situation and being able to use technical skills in a competition. So level one, where we focus on getting as many repetitions as possible under very easy conditions is definitely important and we need this level here. But I would already recommend that you take a little bit footwork in it if you're practicing racket skills, for example. So here I'm also doing that cross court net shot, um, but I'm always taking a small lunge forward and maybe also doing a split step. So you're already connected with footwork. In a match, you're never standing in the corner and just playing that shot, you always have to approach. So take that in. You don't need super high tempo, but just get a little bit footwork in it when you're practicing racket skills. A second tip here for the first level, also put in variations. So not always play the same shot, try also to play other shots. So here you can see I'm not only playing the cross court net shot, I'm also sometimes playing a lift or playing a straight shot. So that will make sure that you will actually be able to play with variations. If you are working without variations too long, you can develop some movements that have a bad influence on your other shots. So for example, if you go to the shuttle like this, your opponent um, is likely to see that you're playing it cross court. So if you try to play with variations, you also make sure that you have the same starting position, a similar movement, and this will help you later when you also have an opponent that tries to beat you and try to get um, to your next shuttle. So try to put in some variations already on the first level and yeah, but focus a lot on getting good repetitions and consistent movement in that shot. So at level one, you're always hitting the shuttle from the same position and you're always coming the same way. That makes it easy, but it also is still far away from a match where the shuttle always comes from a little bit different angle, comes uh, further into the corner, closer to the net, if we think about that cross net shot here, and you're also moving during rally. So this is the next thing I would add in. On level two, try to um, maybe start with a shot from a different corner and then your feeder plays your shot back. So this will create really realistic situations because the shuttle is always com coming from a little bit different angle. You're also moving like you would in a match situation, but still it is quite easy because you know when the shuttle comes to that corner and you can focus on it. Um, you can always try to again put in some variations so you also practice different shots from here. Just think of a situation that is common in a match. So here, for example, I play cross court drop. The next one comes short back and then I play that cross court net shot here on my backhand. Another variation is when the other one plays a drop shot. Also completely different situation, but important that I can also do a movement here a little bit lower and a little bit further into the court. Um, yeah, just also think about what makes sense, what is realistic in a game situation and work on level two this way here. You can already variate the feeding on level one if you, as a feeder, change position and throw it from different uh, angles closer to the net, further into the court, stuff like that can already make it more realistic on level one. But with that level two, you definitely have a lot of different situations and more game-like situations where you hit your shots. So that level two also wanted to bridge the gap between multi-shuttle feeding and a flying shuttle. So in level three, now we want to use a flying shuttle. You always return the shot from your feeder and he also maybe has to move already now, depending a little bit on the technical skill. Here you see um, he has to move from that corner to this corner and you always have a fixed pattern with that shuttle. So again, I already know 
where and when the shuttle comes to my um, backhand corner and when I can practice the shot. But you already see this looks a lot more like an open match situation. It is so much more realistic than the things we did before and we are getting closer to actually playing that shot in a game-like or match-like situation. For that level just think of a certain pattern where you can practice your technical skill and it is also quite realistic. Very famous patterns are um, lock drop net or three times long, two times short, something like that. Of course it depends on what skill you want to work on. Yeah, if you want to work on a smash for example you have to of course change the exercise. But lock drop net is fine here. As you see on the video um, I'm always moving in the same pattern and playing the same shots and I get some repetition in a more open game like situation. So what is missing for the next level or what do we want to add for the next level? Again, we want to add variation and also want to add decision making. So for example, if we stick with the lock drop net exercise, in the video before on level three, we always played the same pattern. So I always played that cross net shot with the backhand. And now we want to put in variation and make the exercise more complex and more open. So now I can also decide if I want to play a straight net shot or a cross net shot, for example, or I can variate all shots. I can always play straight or cross. So now I'm not only having the options of playing different shots, but I'm also forced to make a decision. So for example, if I'm so far out, does it doesn't even make sense or does it work to play a cross court net shot? Or is it better to stay um, with a straight shot? And I'm also realizing, um, was this a good option? Because if I played a good shot, then maybe the other one didn't even reach the shuttle at all. If he was very high or my shot had a bad quality, then I also learned something out of that experience. So this is a really important step that we put in um, exercises where we are forced to make decisions, put in variations and yeah, learn in which, which situations the technique makes sense and works best and where it makes no sense or maybe it's not working as well. On level 5 we go into small games and by small games I mean we are playing matches now but with certain restrictions that should help us to use that technique or the technical skill we are aiming for more often. So playing without the rear court could be one option of um, a small game where, you, where we practice more of the cross court net shot. So if we take away the rear court there will be many more shots towards the front court and I can also put more focus forward, be a little bit higher maybe. So that will make it a little bit easier, even if we are already in a very complex situation. When you are counting points and play matches like that, there's always the danger that many players um, just play to win and they are not willing to try any new skills because usually when you try something new, um, yeah, it's not working as good as your old things. So first thing you could do if you are a coach or if you're a player, just dare to try new things and set your focus on progress and improvement instead of pure winning. But if you see this is not working, you could also say a cross-court net shot that scores a point gets three points, for example. So then you are much more, it's much more likely that you also try it more often, have more situations um, yeah, where you try if it works and you get a really cool and great feedback if you actually score a point with those cross net shots. So now we've reached level 6 and I can assure you if you go through those previous levels you have a much higher chance of um, using that technique also successfully when you play a match or a competition but still um, you have to practice it in an open match situation. Once again if we play matches in the training I think it's cool to win and also important that you want to win but sometimes it's better to have the focus more on improvement and progress and then maybe try to use that shot even if you're not feeling 100% sure that it will work or that you will choose it in the right situation but only if you try it out in a real match in the training you will get closer of making maybe developing a new weapon for yeah, your next competition matches. So maybe one big question left in the end how long should I practice those levels and when am I ready to get to the next one? There is no perfect answer, it depends on how experienced you are, are you really practicing a completely new skill or 
do you just want to perfectionate or improve a certain skill um, I can just recommend you if you're starting from scratch start on level one but don't take too long until you get to the next level you don't need to play 10 perfect shots out of 10 if you want to get to the next one if you um, can play five or six on a quite consistent basis and have a good feeling for a certain racket skill for example then get on to the next level and see if it works if it's not working or if it's too complex on the next level then take a step back and yeah work on that again if it's too easy if you for example experience and see that you maybe don't do not need the second and third level at all you can already jump to level four the main goal from every exercise you're doing when it comes to technical training is that you get a lot of high quality repetitions so if you see that you play a match and you play half an hour and then you play maybe one cross court natural that was okay or that did work then yeah that's just not enough to improve your technical skills you should go back and work maybe on a higher level so here on level one you get a lot of repetitions and you will also see top players with incredible technical skills working here on that basic area so they also want to improve all the small details and this is also really common maybe after a hard training session when you when your legs are tired then you will see top players doing those um, yeah basic racket skill sessions without too much movement so yeah, it's also a good idea to put that into your training. Get some extra repetitions in the end of the training. It will not harm your game or it will not limit your technical skills when you also put in the levels in between. Okay guys, there you have it. I really hope this framework will help you to boost your technical training and help you to um, not only being able to play the perfect shot when you're standing at the net or when you're standing in the rear court, but when you're actually moving with an opponent on the other side. So being able to maybe score a point or play more consistent during a match and during a competition. So if you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any further questions, let me know it in the comments below and I'll get back to you there. See you next time. Bye bye.